So welcome everybody to this latest GCSE video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be walking through the November 2019 AQA Foundation Paper 2 Calculator Paper. So let's get started on this AQA November 2019 Foundation GCSE Paper 2 which is a calculator paper. So looking at question 1 it says simplify 8a minus 3a plus a so 8 take away 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6 so the option we want to circle is our second one. Next one then says which of these numbers is 3 less than a square number? So if we just basically add 3 to each of these numbers and we can just see which one of these would produce a, a square number. So 5 plus 3 is 8, so that's not square. 19 plus 3 is 22, and that's not square. 22 plus 3 is 25, which is square, so there is our option, uh, which is a correct option, which is 3. Question 3 it says circle the length of time between 150 and 135. Well, 150, if we add 10 minutes, that's going to take us to 2 pm. And then add another hour, and that takes us to 3 pm. And then add another 35 minutes to take us to 3.35 pm. So all we need then to do is add these times up. So I've got one hour plus 10 minutes plus 35 minutes, which is one hour and 45 minutes, which is there, our first option. Now looking at question four, the question four says that circle the letter of the shape that has rotational symmetry of order two. Now rotational of order symmetry two basically means that when you cut the shape out, how many different ways can you reinsert that shape? So looking at shape A, it's an equilateral triangle, or we assume to be an equilateral triangle. So that will have three different ways of cutting that shape out and putting it back, uh, different ways we can slot that in. Shape Q, which we can assume has been a parallelogram, well there's two different ways, so that's definitely one. R, which the circle has an infinite number of rotational symmetry, and S, which is a square we'd assume, has got an order of rotation rotational symmetry of four because there are four different ways in which we can slot that shape back in if we were to cut it out. So the final answer for this is going to be Q. Now moving on to question five, this work looking at averages. So it says that here are eight numbers. And we've got eight numbers and the question is asking us to work out the range. Now to work out the range, what we need to do is take the highest number, which in this case is 14, and subtract that from the smallest number, which is three, giving us a range of 11. Now in terms of working out the median, this is worth two marks. Now I've got eight numbers, so how I always recommend students to work with these questions is to not play hangman, but to order the numbers first. Now it's really important that you do show that you've ordered the numbers or had an attempt at ordering the numbers, as this in itself will carry one of the two marks. So here I've got one three, I've got two fours, I've got a five, I've got a nine, I've got a 10, a 12, and a 14. Now, obviously the dashes help so that I'm not missing a number out or making a silly error. Now, what I just need to do now is just take one from the top, one from the bottom, and keep continuing until I end up with either one number or two numbers. Now, here I've got two numbers, so I just gotta think what number's between five and nine. If I'm not too sure, simply add the two numbers together and divide it by two, in which we get the answer of seven. So with question six, it says the shop has an offer. You get five pound off if you spend 100 pounds, 10 pound off if you spend 150, and 20 pound off if you spend 200 pounds. So as a shop, the dresses cost 42 pounds each. Amira buys three dresses, Bobby buys five dresses, and the question is asking us how much more uh, than Amira does Bobby pay? So let's have a look at how much each of these two people pay. So Amira is buying three dresses. So what I need to do is three times 42. And again, if I just get my calculator out and just quickly do that, not by pressing 7, so 42 times 3 equals £126. And because she's spending more than £100, she's going to get a £5 off. So here, she's going to get minus £5. So she is paying by spending £121. Now, in terms of Bobby, so Bobby's buying five dresses, so it's five times 42. So five times 42 equals 210. Now because they are spending more than 200, they're gonna get 20 pounds off. 
so that's going to be 190 now it's really important that you show you're working out because obviously it's worth three marks so to work out the difference what I need to do is 190 minus 121 69 pounds now moving on to the next question so this is looks at solving equations so here we want to get x by itself so what do we need to get rid of the 17 so I take away 17 and so 12 take away 17 gives me minus 5 Question B, I want to get rid of the 4. What's the 4 doing? It's dividing, so to get rid of it, I need to multiply. So I've got W equals 12 times 4, which is 48. For question 7C, it's about simplifying, so it's just about taking the common thing, so I can cross the M's off. So then all I've then got to simplify is 9 into 12. What number goes into both? Well, uh, th these two numbers is 3, so I've got 3 goes into 9 three times, and 4. Give me an answer. Of 3 over 4. Now, if you want to write your answers 0.75, that's fine as well. Moving on to question 8, it says the cost of a taxi journey is £3 plus £2 per mile. Circle the cost of a journey of 6 miles. Well, if you're travelling 6 miles, that's going to be 6 times 2, which is 12. I then need to add the £3, give me a total charge of £15. Question 9, it says what percentage of the shape is shaded? So you can see here I've got a total of 25 squares so I just need to count how many squares are shaded so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine and then a half so that's ten so it's going to be ten over twenty five to so to convert that into a percentage all I've got to do is multiply that by a hundred in which I get forty percent for question ten it says a group of students were asked the name of their favorite burger the pictogram shows the results the key is missing and so we know that the veggie burger is equates to 40 people. So here we've got 40 people divided by five circles equals eight. So one circle equals eight people. And the question is asking us how many people chose chicken? Well, that's going to be three and a half. So that's going to be eight, 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 and four. So if I add all those four numbers up, I get an answer of 28. And again, all you're working out needs to be in this little area here. For question 11, uh, it's about substitution. So what I need to do is get the calculator out. So let's just do just that. And let me just show you what we're typing in. So we need to type in 250 minus 16 squared multiplied by 18 times 14 over minus 28. Now, one thing I would probably recommend that you do is to work out these amounts separately. But if you are feeling lazy, as long as you're entering your calculation exactly how I've written here, you should get the correct answer. So let's show you how to enter those in. So for the first part, we've got 250 minus 16 squared, and that gives me an answer of minus 6. So let me just write minus 6. Then for the second part, we're going to use our fraction button and we've got 18 times 14 over minus 28, press equals, I get minus 9, which is going to give me an answer of minus 50, uh, sorry, positive 54. And there is our answer. For question 12, it says when a spinner is spun it shows either blue green or red or white and when a coin is tossed it shows heads or tails spinner is spun and the coin is tossed complete the table complete a list of all the possible outcomes now for this you want to have some form of order now they're giving you an idea of bh so what we're going to do is we're going to keep the the spinner color consistent and then just sort of change the um toy the toy the coin uh, throw so here i've got blue and a tail. Then I'm going to change the colour so I've got green and I've got H and tails. Then I'm going to change red and in which I've got H and R and T. And then I'm going to go to my final colour which is white in which I could have a white and a head or a white and a tail. So there are eight different combinations in total. Now looking at question 13 it says that quadrilateral PQRS has P to Q 5 centimetres, QR is perpendicular to PQ. QR is 7 centimetres, angle QPS is 135 degrees and PS is 8.5 centimetres. On the grid, draw the quadrilateral PQRS. PQ has been drawn for you. Now, if you've got an A5 version of this, this should be on A4 paper. So therefore we can draw it accurately. If you have got, uh, this has been shrunk onto a smaller booklet from your school or whatever, then the measurements are going to be completely different and you're not going to, it's not going to be able to be done correctly. So this question needs to be done on A4. 
Now in terms of this is to do with construction, so in terms of the topic, so the first thing we need to notice is that perpendicular means 90 degrees. So that means 90 degrees, so what I need to do is draw a 90 degree line from here and measure 7 centimetres. So just count the squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that point is going to be a straight line going through there. Now it is important when you're doing construction, you definitely use a ruler. And this is probably going to make the video last about three hours in terms of going. Now it's worth four marks in which you'd get four marks for every correct thing that you then do. Now, the next bit of information, so that's that bit done, so I can tick that and I can tick that. The next thing I need to do is draw the angle from P, a QPS of 135 degrees. Now 135 degrees, measuring here and going with zero on PQ, I'm going to go in this direction and what you'll find is that 135 is along this blue line. And what I'm going to do is once I measure 135, I'm going to draw that projection line. So let me just do that. So let's join this up. So and what I can then do is just mark what I've done and that this angle here is 135, which again should be an obtuse angle. Now for the next one, so let's just label in terms of the points. So this point is R. Now S is somewhere along this line. Now the only bit of information that I know is that P to S is 8.5 centimeters. Now for this, what you need to do is with your compass, which I'm just going to draw a very poor picture of one. Here is our pencil. Right a bit, and there is your pin. Now what you need to do here is set that distance between your pin and your pencil at 8.5 centimeters, then put your pin at point P and then just swing the the um, compass so it creates an arc and it's pretty much going to be around about this mark here so what you should have is a little arc that goes looks like that and from where that arc is and let me just do a little notation here so that distance there needs to be 8.5 centimeters now from that what you then need to do is draw another line let's just do that in green from that intersection point and connect it to R like so and there you go now could you get away with just measuring 8.5 centimeters along that blue line maybe but again more accurately it should be with a compass to go from there and obviously joining the point up so it does look kind of look like a right angle trapezium but actually it's not um, so just be wary of that so moving on to our next question, so question 14, it says circle the solid that has six vertices. Well, six vertices means corners. So a cone has one, a cuboid has eight, a triangular prism has six. So that there is going to be our answer. A square based pyramid, again, it will have five. So for six, it's going to be a triangular prism. Which of these fractions is close to one? Well, the most easiest way of doing that is to actually just type it to your calculator and write down the decimal. So here 13 over 10 which is 1.3. So this is minus 0.25 away. This is plus 0.3 away. So 3 quarters is closer to 1. Moving on to question 16 it says that three teams A, B and C play in a competition. Games won by A in, and by, by the ratio of games won by B is 2 to 1. Games won by B to C is 3 to 1. Team B win has won 6 games. In total, how many games have the three teams won? So, in terms of this, so if we just write down A to B, and that's 2 to 1. And we've got B to C, which is 3 to 1. Now we know that in terms of B, that equals six games. So B is six games. So that means that if one is one part is six in this situation, then A must be 12. So A is one 12 games. So A equals 12 games. And B we've told is one six games. And so to work out C, well B, if B is six, so three parts, is 6 then obviously that then must mean that in this case so here 1 
part equals 6, so therefore 2 equals 12. Now here, 3 parts equals 6, so therefore 1 part must equal 2. So then C has won 2 games. Now the question is asked is in total, how many games have the three teams won in total? Well, all of them are going to do is add those numbers up and I get an answer of 20. So question 17 is match each expression in column P with the equivalent expression in, com in column Q. One has been done for you. So again, all we need to do is just remember multiply numbers with numbers, divide letters with um, and numbers with numbers, letters with letters, and that should be fine. So 2A times 3, well 2 times 3 is 6, so we're looking for 6A. So that's going to be that one there. 12a squared divided by 2. Well, we can only divide the numbers. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that's going to be 6a squared, which is here. And 12 times a half. Well, 12 times a half is 5. And so we're looking for 5a squared. So that's going to be that option there. So looking at question 18, it says drink is made by adding water to juice. And the instructions are add the amount of water that is two between two and three times the amount of juice. And Rana has 120 milliliters of juice. She adds some water and has made 450 milliliters of the drink. Has Rana followed the instructions? Well, so for this, in terms of the water needed, she's going to need... If we multiply that by 2, it's going to be 240 milliliters. And if we multiplied it by 3, it's going to be 360 milliliters. So let's have a look at how much water did Rana use. So Rana used, and it's going to be 450 minus 120, which is 330 milliliters of water. So is 330 between 240 and 260 is yes. She did. As 330 is between 240 and 360. So anything along those lines would get you sufficient marks. And there are several ways uh, on the mark scheme that gives you those marks. But as long as again, yes, and you're showing some working out of how much water is needed, and how much water she did use then that would be fine I would say the marks would come from me working out one of those working out that she's used 330 and then one mark for my final conclusion and in terms of question 19 again it says that rhombus is cut in uh, along the diagonals to make four triangles which three statements are correct from this statement so the first one is that all four triangles are right angled well that's going to be true because all the interior angles or 360 and if they're all the same side then that is going to be true all four triangles are isosceles again that's going to be incorrect because these two sides are going to be different not the same diagonals so although this side is going to be the same as this side and that side is going to be the same as that one so unfortunately they're not going to be isosceles all four triangles are congruent which basically means they are the same and that is true and the area of the rhombus is equal to four lots the area of one triangle. That's definitely going to be true. And obviously the last one is incorrect. So we've already ticked three boxes. Moving on to question 20. Um, I'm guessing this is involving scale drawing. So again, this needs to be printed off on A4, not A5, or the question needs to be amended. So it says that a map of an island is shown on a centimetre grid. A, B, C are houses. The actual distance between A and B is 150 metres. Uh, show that the scale on the map is 1 to 1. 30,000. So first thing I need to do is measure the distance from A to B. So A to B, as I can see without using a ruler, is 5 centimetres. Now if the actual distance is 1,500 metres, so what I need to do is convert 1,500 metres into centimetres. Now how do I do that? Well I multiply that by 100. So if I then do that, I've got 5 centimetres equals 1500 times 100 which is 150,000 now from this what I then want to do is divide that by 5 so that I get 1 2 and then the answer is going to be the 30,000 which is what they wanted me to show so in terms of the two marks I need to show this working out now for question 4b it says work out the actual distance between a and c so the first thing we need to do is measure the distance from A to C. Now, 
depending on your accuracy of this so first of all I'll tell you the steps in which you do this and I'll give you the correct answer so what you need to do is you need to measure the distance in centimeters of A to C. The next thing you then need to do is then multiply this answer by 30,000 and then what you then need to do is then because they want the answer in kilometers and we've got the answer in centimeters so let me just write that this is the answer in centimeters I then need to convert that into kilometers so what I need to do is I need to divide that by a hundred to convert that into meters and then divide it by a thousand to convert it into kilometers so this converts it into meters this is then going to convert it into kilometers so all in all so overall what you're going to divide your answer by two is you can do the answer in step two divide that by one with five zeros so you're going to divide that by a hundred thousand and which the answer you should get is any answer between 1.32 to 1.38 would be fine in your final answer now in terms of the four marks you need to make sure that you are doing and showing those three steps so make sure that you're measuring the distance and writing it down make sure you're multiplying it by 30,000 it's so obviously then converting it in centimeters and then either divide it by 100 and then divide it by 1,000 or divide your answer by 100,000 and then you should get the answer of 1.3 an answer between 132 and 100, uh, 132 1.32 and 1.38 now looking at question 21 it says that a and b are both prime numbers they are each less than 20 give an example where a plus b is odd but not prime so in terms of the prime numbers that are less than 20 well we could have 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 and 19 they're all our prime numbers that are less than 20 so what I need to do is add them and um, that it's so it's odd but not prime now the only way I'm going to get a odd number is if I'm definitely going to use 2. So what I'm going to do is add 2 to these and show which one is not going to give me a prime number. Well, I can see straight away that if I did 2 plus 19 which gives me 21 and 21 is not prime as it's a multiple of 7 or has more than two factors so here I can say that my two numbers are going to be 2 and 19. Now you could also have a different range of numbers you can have 2 and 7 you can also have 2 and 13 so as long as some evidence of that so if you did use 2 plus 7 you then say that 9 and 9 is not prime and 2 plus 13 is 15 and that's also not prime so as long as you're stating one of those reasons then that would be absolutely fine for question 22 it says here's a cuboid the two largest faces are blue the other four faces are green is the total blue area greater than the total of the green area so let's first of all work out what the blue area is going to be now the two largest faces as you can see are going to be the two the bases at the top and the bottom the two flat surfaces so this here and this here they're going to be our largest faces so here the blue face is going to be 9 times 5 which is 45 and I've got two of those so it's going to be 90 centimeter squared in total now in terms, of the, in terms of the green faces, well, I'm going to have the four, the two side panels and these two here. So in terms of the green faces, I'm going to have 5 times 3, which is 15, and I've got two of those, so that's 30. And I've also got uh, 9 times 3 which is 27 and again I've got two of those so that's going to give me 54 so what I then need to do is add those two numbers together to get the total so the total green is going to be 84 centimeters squared and going back to the question is the total blue area greater than the total green area well the answer is going to be yes and there is my evidence in terms of why 
Moving on to question 23, it says the result of a game is win, lose or draw. After 80 games, the relative frequency of a win is 0.4, relative frequency of a loss is 0.25. How many games uh, had a result of a draw? Now, for relative frequency, all I need to do is multiply the total amount of games by the probability. So I've got 80. So if I write win, so it's going to be 80 times 0.4. The losses is going to be... 80 times 0.25 so if I just now type that into my calculator I can see that the last one is 25% of 80 which is 20 and 80 times 0.4 is 32 so all I then need to do is if there are 80 games in total is just do 80 take away 32 take away 20 and let's just quickly do that so 80 minus 32 minus 20 gives me an answer of 28. Now for question 24 it says work out the lowest common multiple of 120 and 144. Now for this all we need to do is basically what the question is asking me is what is the smallest number that appears in the 144 times table and the 120 times table. Now there's several ways in which you can do this, you can use Venn diagrams, you can use product to their primes, you can use Venn diagrams, it doesn't really matter which method you go for. For me, I'm just going to use my calculator, I've got 144, I just need to write down what the times table is going to be. Now knowing my knowledge, I know that a multiple of 120 is going to end in a zero, so if I just work through the 144 times table, so 144 equals plus 144 I get 144. Now if you are going to do this method I strongly recommend that you do write down at least three of the numbers on the times table. So the next one is 432 um, and the next one is 576 and then if I then work out what the rest are going to be so I've got 720 so is, oh, I don't know why I've got Zero, so let's just change that to 720. So 720 is my first thing. So if I just do 120, 240, 360, uh, 480, and that's going to carry on, and it does eventually become 720. And uh, there's our fun answer. Now you might find the product set primes so if you've got a calculator that's got a fat button. So for example, as you can see on this particular calculator, it has. So if I enter 120. Press equals, then press shift and fact. It gives you my number as a product to their prime. So here, 120 equals, um, let's get that calculator back up again, 2 cubed times 3 times 5, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And then 144, shift fact is 2 to the power 4 times 3 squared. So again, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then obviously I can then use my Venn diagram to work out what numbers go in which. And then for the low, highest common, lowest common multiple, I just multiply the numbers that are in the two circles. Or well, question 25 says scatter diagram shows the best high jump and the best long jump for 15 boys. And the question 15a is write down the type of correlation shown. Now for one mark, all I need to do is to state whether it's got no correlation, positive or uh, negative correlation. You don't need to comment on the strength. It's not essential. But if you did, you won't necessarily lose marks. But as you can see, the, the, it's like a line that's going up. So it's going to be positive correlation. So that would get you the one mark. Now, if you did write strong, then that would be fine because it has got strong positive correlation but it's not essential that you write strong positive is the one that we then need question 15b says liam has a best high jump of 166 use the line of best fit to estimate the high jump so what we need to do first is draw a line of best fit now remembering that with a line of best fit it doesn't start have to start from zero you want to draw a line where you've got the same amount of points above the line as you've got below now let me just tell you the criteria of drawing your line of best fit first. Now if I just remove my line of best fit, uh, and let me just show you what the criteria of this is going to be. Now in terms of this, the line of best fit needs to go between this, these, these boundaries. So it needs to go from 150 to 504, which is this point here and 
between the 412, which is that point there. And it needs to go from 180, and this is from the official mark scheme, 180 to 550, which is here, to 558, which is here. Now, if I just draw two lines connecting those dots together, the best that I can. Like so, let's draw the next one. Now this is from the official mark scheme, so your line of best fit has to go through in between those two orange lines. So it, obviously your line of best fit is going to be different to other people, so my line is the same colour. So my line of best fit has to go through that tunnel, let's say. And you can choose and spend a bit of time going through which one is going to be best. So I'll try and get it exactly in between. Of what it should be but the longest through there now you will have a range of values so reading up it says that Liam has a high jump of 166 so I need to find where 166 is on the x-axis so 166 is just there I need to go up to that point and as soon as it hits your line of best fit you then want to record what measurement that is going to be now in terms of acceptable answers for 25b they would be accepting any answer that is roughly uh, between, so they would give you any answer. If I look at where the boundaries are, I would say an answer between 100, 526 to 536. So any answer between. 526 to 536 but as long as you're showing that you've used your line of best fit then that would be absolutely fine now for 25c it says that another boy has a high jump of 195 centimeters give a reason why you should not use your line of best fit to estimate the long jump now looking at the data we've got that the highest boy threw 185 now 195 is quite a lot more than the data that we've got recorded so it's not going to be accurate with well, line of best we're not going to say it's not impossible for him to uh, jump that 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 length uh, but unfortunately we can't use line as point as the highest so you can't use as the highest recorded value is 185 centimeters now this is what we call if you've done a bit of higher knowledge or you have depending on how you've been taught in terms of vocabulary this is what we call extrapolation now extrapolation is when you're using a number that is outside what has been recorded so obviously when you do an experiment in recording data if a value falls outside it's not going to be accurate as long as it unless it's really really close like let's say 186 centimeters to the value so and that's what we call extrapolation. If you mention that word, that would probably get you the one mark. But again, something along those lines would be absolutely fine. Moving on to question 26, it says that a car journey is in two stages. Stage one, that the car travels 110 miles in two hours. Stage two, the car travels 44 miles at the same average speed as stage one. Work out the time for stage two. So first thing we need to do here uh, is number one, is work out the speed in stage two. One. So we do that by doing 110 divided by 2, which is 55. So they're traveling 55 miles per hour. So to work out the time, so for number 2, so time, which is equal to distance divided by speed. So I need to do the distance, which is 44 miles, divided by 55. And again, if I get my calculator, 44 divided by 5, uh, 50, uh, 55 rather, equals 0.8. So what we then need to do, so that equals 0.8. Now we want the time in minutes, so it's 0.8 hours equals, and then to convert hours into minutes, what I then need to do is just times that by 60. So 0.8, and that's my calculator, and just get that back up. So 0.8 times uh 60 equals 48. 
going to be 48 minutes. Then for question 27, which is comparing coefficients. So what we need to do here, it says here is an identity. We've got a and then 3x minus 10 is equivalent to 21x plus 2b. First we need to do is expand that this left hand side. So what we get is we get 3ax minus 10a is identical 21x plus 2b. Now what we need to do here is what we call comparing the coefficients. So I've got 3 lots 3ax and I've got 21. So those two things need to be the same. So 3a equals 21, then a is going to equal 7. And then for the next one, we've got minus 10a has got to be the same as 2b. So minus 10a equals 2b. Now if a is 7, then this is going to be minus 70 equals 2b. I take the 2 over by dividing, so b equals minus 35. Then moving on to question 28, which is a bearing question. So it says j and k are ships, and we uh, p is a port, and j is due south of p, so we just need to look at this, and we know it's an isosceles triangle, and we need to what we need to do is we need to work out what this bearing here is going to be. Now it's not drawn to scale, so I can't just use my protractor to measure this out. So what I've got to do is just use my knowledge. Now the first thing we notice that it's an isosceles triangle, so let's first of all work out what these two angles here are going to be. How do we work that out? Well we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180, so if I do 50, 180 take away 56, divide that by 2, and I do that on my calculator, which let's just load that up now. So 180 minus 56 divided by 2 gives me an answer of 62. So this angle here is 62. Now the good thing about these questions is that I can do my working out on the diagram. Now what we then need to do is notice that this angle here is corresponding like an F angle to this angle J. So that's going to be 62 degrees. And the reason for that is because it's corresponding. So to work out what this blue angle is going to be, it's going to be 62 plus 180. So again, adding those numbers up, I'm going to get an answer of 242 degrees. And again, just double checking, we're going in clockwise directions, a three digit number, so we are all good. Well, question 29, it says that the fifth term of a linear sequence is 17, the sixth term is 21. So again, and we need to work out the hundredth term. So the first thing I do is draw 5 and 6. We know that this here is 17 and this is 21. So from this, we can see that the linear sequence is going by plus 4, which therefore means that the fourth term is going to be 13, this is going to be 9, this is going to be 5 and that's going to be 1. Now from this I can then work out what the nth term is. So the nth term is the difference which is 4n. And then how do I get from 4 to the first term? I take away 3. Now from this nth term, so I'll just write this down, and then to find the hundredth term I substitute n equals 100 so it's going to be 4 times 100 take away 3 which gives me an answer of 396. Now for question 30, it's looking at vectors. So what I need to do here, now these are pretty simple in terms of how we actually do this. What we need to do is multiply vector A by 3 and add it to B. So I've got 3A plus B, not 3B, so let's just get rid of that. B, so I've got 3 lots of 2, 7 plus 5, 2. Now if I just work that out, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 7 is 21. And I add that to 5, 2. So five, 6 plus 5 is 11. And 21 times minus 2, it should be, uh, plus minus 2 is going to give me 19. And there is my final vector. Moving on to question 31, which is our last question. So this is a compound interest question. So it says the value of a house is 120,000. The value expected is to increase 5% each year. Work out the expected value after four years. Now you could work this out separately or you could do it in one line. So to do it all in one line, we do the original amount. Now 100% plus 5% is 105%. Now if I convert that into a decimal, I get 1.05. So if I then multiply this by 1.05, and then raise it to the power of how many years I get this calculation. So all I need to do is type this into my calculator. So I've got 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and times that by 1.05 to the power of 
four, I get an answer of one four on for five, eight, sixty, and seventy-five pence. And it is important you do, or it says to two significant figures. Let's just rub that out. I've not answered the question read the question carefully. So this equals one four five eight six zero oh, point seven five. The second sig fig is ten thousand. So round this up, we're gonna get a hundred and fifty thousand and there is my final answer now if you were to work out the four five percent each year and just did it in four stages so you said after the first year and second year third year fourth year then that would be absolutely fine it's just going to take you a lot longer to answer the questions whereas if you just wrote this line down wrote down the final answer and then round it up and again, make sure you do round up to two sig fig, otherwise that will cost you one mark. So if you left your answer is 145,816.75 pence, you would lose one mark because you didn't round it to two sig fig. And that concludes the end of this paper. Now I will put the grade boundaries in the description below to see what you would have got on this paper.